Round two. I just recorded this video and forgot to put the microphone on on my microphone. I forgot to flip the on switch. Ugh. Rookie move. Okay. Today I'm talking about supporting your camera. Everybody wants a sharp shot. That's what this is about. You get a sharp shot in your camera, you can take it into the computer, you can edit it, you can do whatever you want. So when we talk about fast shutter speeds and shooting with high ISO and, and you know all these different things, it's all about getting a sharp shot. But one of the um, things that you can do to get the sharpest shot possible is to make sure your camera doesn't move. Always make sure your camera is stable. So I'm gonna talk about tripod um, collars that are mounted onto your long lenses, your telephoto lenses. So this is my 70 to 200 millimeter lens right here. I have it, you know, it's on the camera here. And a lot of photographers may mount their camera like this if they don't realize that they have a, a mount right here. It's built onto the lens. Some lenses, it comes with the lens and you have to actually take it on and off. And I know we get lazy and sometimes we don't put it on because we, you know, we just don't want to carry that extra thing with us. Um, for me, this lens, my uh, 70 to 200 Sigma, it's built onto the lens, so there's nothing I can do about it. When you shoot like this, there's a real chance that there's going to be some movement in your camera. It, it's not very stable when you shoot like this. I have my tripod all the way down, you know, it, it's sitting here, but any little movement is going to make the camera move because it's it's lens heavy. Right now it's tipping forward. If there's wind, it could catch the front of the lens and it, it's just not a good way to shoot. So if you have a mount like this on your lenses, use it, you know, definitely use it. So put it like this, lens drops in and there you go. Look at that. Now you have a nice stable that's rock solid in there. The camera's not moving at all. Everything feels nice and stable. On September 11th, Eric and I did some shooting around New York to get pictures of the 9-11 tribute lights. Um, we started off in New Jersey at one of the ports over there. And it's right across the river from the Statue of Liberty and the Freedom Tower and Lower Manhattan where they had the tribute lights. So I, I took a little video there and I was talking about this. Uh, so check this out. So this is a pretty good spot. Um, I'm shooting in manual. Doing a 15 second exposure. Uh, I'm at f11 right now. And uh, I'm shooting at 200 millimeters because it's pretty far away. Uh, I will crop in afterwards also. So I have my uh, camera set in exposure delay mode. I don't want any movement. I'm using a um, cable shutter release. You know, I'm sh we're shooting across the river here, so I mean, you can see in the background there, it's pretty far away. So, uh, but the uh, images are coming out nice. You just have to be super careful that everything is still because it's a little windy, it's a big lens, and um, you know, any movement is going to blur the shot at this kind of a distance. Now, on my camera, I just want to show you something. Notice I have my lens mounted to the tripod and not the camera. Uh, the reason for this and why you would want to do this with a long lens is, is it balances everything out and I can quickly go from portrait to landscape mode. So that's really great. So if you, if you get a long lens, make sure you get one that has a tripod collar that swivels like that. Um, makes it a lot easier. Okay, I'm going to continue shooting. Now I'm going to drop a couple of images in here to you know, show you what I actually captured that night. And it, I can tell you right now, because of the wind that was there, if I had mounted my camera to the back plate here, like under the camera, instead of on the actual uh, lens here, most of my images would have been blurry. And some of them were, but most of them were okay because I had it mounted like this and my camera was stable. I was using a cable release. I wasn't touching my camera. Shooting across the river like that, it must have been a mile or two. I'm, I don't even know how far it was, but it was a long distance into Manhattan and all the buildings are nice and sharp. And I was able to get some very cool images. And now there were a lot of photographers there just, you know, lined up. Last time we were here, which was a couple of years ago, we were the only ones here. I mean, it's an industrial road out on the water. And now there's probably 50 people with a tripod set up over here. It's a whole row of people there. It goes all the way down to the end, so down the, um, you know, along the roadway there. And 
you know, some of them were not shooting this way. And, you know, maybe as a rookie photographer, you don't think about that. But at such a long distance, even the smallest movement, if you're doing a 30 second exposure or a 25 second exposure, and there's a little bit of wind on your lens hood, you're gonna have a blurry image. And I'm sure a lot of them learned that that night. Um, but it's just one of those things that you, you learn with experience, the situations where you need to use certain gear in, in certain situations. This is something if you're shooting with a 300 millimeter lens, uh, 70 to 200, any lens that comes with a collar, you know, to mount it to your tripod, use it, especially when you're shooting at 200 millimeters. Um, another thing that, you know, while we're talking about that, if you're gonna be shooting mostly landscape photography with your long lens, or if you're going to be doing um, animal or um, you know wildlife photography, birds, you don't want, so uh, this tripod, if I want to, I could extend this all the way, and then I also have another collar on here where I can extend it again. So this, this actually can go up to seven feet. And what happens is it's a travel tripod. And to use it like this is not a good idea. So that night, I really didn't have it extended much at all because again, it creates an instability point right here. The, you know, the, the camera wobbles up top, you know? So the, the most sturdy part of the tripod is when everything's down. This is a good tripod for that, but it's a little short for me when I'm using it like this. They sell tripods that are, you know, six, seven feet tall that don't have a center pole to extend. And basically it looks just like this and it's super sturdy. So that might be something you wanna look into also when you're shopping tripods, if that, that's the type of photography you use. I would say most photographers go with something like what I have with at least one center extension because you know, we're probably not that specialized. Uh, I know for Eric and I, when we do our Disney photography, having the ability to shoot over crowds of people is huge for us. So we need that seven foot extension and still be able to have a packable small tripod. Just uh, some stability tips today. I wasn't sure what I was gonna talk about. We're packing up for our trip. We're heading, uh, we're going to the Poconos this time and we're gonna be doing some waterfall photography and you know, fall foliage. So uh, I was you know, looking at this lens and this is a lens I'll definitely use, but when I'm shooting a waterfall, I'm gonna have it set up like this uh, because I don't want any movement, you know, and they're going to be long exposures during the day. Uh, I'll drop some videos in here that have to do with tripods and stability and, um, you know, getting a sharp image. And uh, the next time I see you, uh, maybe I'll show you some uh, pictures from our trip. Okay, see you in the next video.